20th now, a 6-4 game, as Orlando Lamb, number 20, one of the outstanding point guards for Virginia Commonwealth, puts BCU on top for the second time in the game. We have 15-55 remaining in the first half. A quick recap, Michael Brown scored off the opening tip for BCU. Terry Connor counted with two baskets for Alabama to give the Crimson Tide a 4-2 lead. It was tied 4-4 until the basket you just saw, and now Bobby Lee Hurt has tied it up once again 6-6. BCU brings it across the timeline, and they face Steve Grody, one of the best defenses in NCAA basketball in Alabama. Burn, I think Friday night we saw one of the better defensive performances of the season. Uh, they blocked four shots. They altered another 10. Uh, the net effect was Arizona shot 29% from the field. Uh, I think that BCU has got to solve uh, that armor that they put up around the basket. Find some way to get inside and score some easy baskets today. Well, Rolando Lamb chose to hit from outside. He now has four points, and it's an eight to six game with 15.04 to go. From the corner, Jim Farmer, number 21 for Alabama. We'll give you the starting lineup as we go along. Number five, Calvin Duncan in the backcourt, along with the man who has the ball now, number 20, Rolando Lamb. The other three up front, number 30, Neil Waite, number 22, Michael Brown, and the center, Mike Schlegel, number 43. Virginia Commonwealth, dressed in yellow and black. Foul underneath, Terry Connor, number 30 for Alabama, will draw the foul. I think what we've really got in this ball game is an Alabama front line against the Virginia Commonwealth backcourt. Uh, both the guards from Virginia Commonwealth are NBA prospects. They do the majority of the scoring. Alabama, of course, likes to get the ball inside. They've had trouble with perimeter shooting. Uh, that's how it's stacked up. That is J.D. Barnett, coach at Virginia Commonwealth University. His team on top 8-6, and they'll have a chance to increase the lead by one with 14-42 remaining in the first half. We're live from the pit in Albuquerque, second round region in the West. 14-42 remaining in the first half of the second round the game in the West region. A belated good afternoon, Berlin Chris along Steve Brody. VCU really has a problem in trying to combat that Alabama height advantage as well, Steve. Uh, no question, but VCU, on the other hand, is a very disciplined offensive team. They'll run that offense until they get a good shot. Uh, they'll test the patience of Alabama's defense. Uh, that's what we've got going on on that side of the court. It'll be fun to watch the guards for Virginia Commonwealth. You may not know them well, but you will before the afternoon is out. Orlando Lamb and Calvin Duncan, two of the best as a tandem in the country. Mike Schlegel, number 43, center. Listed at 6'8", stands really 6'7". Inbound by Virginia Commonwealth, man-to-man, -man, Alabama defense. Number 21, Jim Butler well, in the zone now on the inbound play. Yeah, the, the only time they'll play zone is when it's out from uh, underneath. Now, I really believe the Virginia Commonwealth, and you saw, you saw them earlier get a layup off of that pattern offense. Uh, if they get inside like that, I think Alabama will go zone and force them to shoot through the perimeter. Nice fake by Michael Brown, but the shot from the ball. And a backcourt foul against Virginia Commonwealth, Neil Wake, number 30. VCU has played 50-50 man and zone defense this season. They surprised me by starting in the man defense, but on that side of the court, they forced that Alabama offense to the perimeter early in this ballgame. First substitution of the game is number 41, Alvin Robinson, a freshman from Aiken, South Carolina, 6'9", 205. He has replaced Neil Wake. Now the pressure deployed by BCU, 14-10 to go in the first half. And the defensive pressure is not something Alabama wasn't expecting. And they handled it very well each time uh, down the floor. Connor, six points to Jerry Connor. And you know, Connor now, with an excellent start offensively in this ballgame, could end up being a key. Uh, they suffered with him not scoring uh, many points on Friday night. Tie ball game, 13-49 to go. We'll give you the rest of that Alabama lineup as they wind up in that hand for man now. Buck Johnson and Bobby Lee Hurst underneath the two tall guys. This is Bobby Lee Hurst, the all-conference performer number 34 with the rebound. Terry Connor across the timeline. And the multiple zone defense are changing defense by VCU. And you're right, they've changed uh, almost every time down the floor. They look to be in somewhat of a matchup zone right now. That shot by Derek McKee, freshman, will not fall. And another foul underneath, called this time on Calvin Duncan, number five. I think what you'll see around the, uh, the offensive basket for Alabama uh, is that Virginia Commonwealth will block off the board as well as anybody in the country. J.D. Barnett's uh, squad is very well drilled. Anytime you get a long rebound, though, or you get a shot that hits the rim a couple times, then the taller team gets the advantage. Derek McKee, our MVP of the other night, number 41. Number 21, Jim Farmer. He had a real hot hand off the bench the other night, but that shot won't go. 
That ball tipped away by Buck Johnson and retrieved by Derek McKee and Alvin Scrolls in the tie game with 13 minutes to go in the first half. And I think if Farmer had to do it again, he would have shot that ball immediately when he hit it. Took a couple dribbles in, ended up shooting a more difficult shot. Off balance shot by Buck Johnson, 12-50. Remaining in the first half, we are tied at eight. Virginia Commonwealth University, winners of 10 of their last 11 games. Burn, they got three three-year starters, two two-year starters, and the starting five. This starting unit has won 49 games over the last two seasons. This is a chance for them to earn some respect outside of the Sun Belt Conference. Rolando Lamb had 30 points in the win the other night, Friday night, and he's now got six to 10 VCU points in the first half. It looks like a man-to-man -man this time. There you can see, anytime the ball goes inside, DCU will flap it in, force the pass back to the perimeter. Bobby Beaver tipped over to Jim Farmer, number 21, and quickly inside to Buck Johnson. What a wild shot. Rebound by Rolando Lamb. It's a three-on-two break. This is Michael Brown to the basket. This season has opened up their offense a little bit more. Anytime you've got two accomplished guards like, like Duncan and Lamb, uh, you want to get the ball out because they can handle it so well. Ram the break to perfection that time. Ball tipped away by Orlando Lamb, number 20. Retrieved by Terry Connor. Jim Farmer, number 41. Quickly in, inside the Buck Johnson and his contact in the foul call. I think what you'll notice about this defense of Virginia Commonwealth, they play good ball defense. Everyone else will be in a help position. Here you see the post up. The ball goes inside. Look, surrounded by three people, force it back outside. All of the DCU players have tremendously quick defensive hands. There is a reason they are 26 and 5, and that's one of them. Terry Connor has scored six so far. Back to Derek McKee, six time freshman from Meridian. Uh oh, he's hot. Well, like you said, Steve Brody, that he would be one of the keys for Alabama. They need to get that perimeter shooting from Connor, and they've gotten it so far. Well, I think any time that you can get uh, your point guard off to a good start, I think it lends confidence to the rest of the team. And certainly any type of perimeter success they have will open it up in time. Number five, Calvin Duncan, Mike Schlegel. He'll take the shot, hits it. Number 43, Mike Schlegel, 6'7", senior from Bayshore, New York. And the same is true on that end of the floor. If Schlegel can hit that perimeter shot, Obviously, he'll force the inside uh, defensive people uh, outside, opens it up for the VCU pattern offense around the basket. Derek Connor retrieves number 30. Connor, a sophomore from Birmingham. He's averaging 11.5 points per game. That ball tipped away by McKee, but there was contact on the shoulder of Bobby Lee Hurst. Well, that time it was a great defensive play. It was unfortunate that he had his hand on, the, uh, on, the, on Bobby Lee Hurst. As Daryl Neal comes in, let's take a look at the ground level replay. Perfect position. Uh, I was just inconsequential that he had his arm there with a clean steal. Number 15 is in. Robert Dickerson, the senior for BCU from Opelika, Alabama. And number 23, Mark Gottfried is back inside. By the way, you'll notice an absence of hair on four of the VCU starters. Two of the fellas, Michael Brown and Neil Wake, had shaved their heads before the season started. Two of the other starters, Orlando Lamb and Calvin Duncan, shaved their heads on a bet with each other last night. I, I'd say that's a pretty loose team, isn't it? Huh. Mark Guthridge, short, will shoot it again? Perhaps. They have waited too long. Nearly basket interference, and DCU comes down with it. And here's one of the hairless wonders to another, Calvin Duncan traveling. Uh, I know he tripped, but I, I failed to see where he dragged that pivot foot. There's a good look at Calvin Duncan. And these are the defensive signals that they'll flash from the, uh, from the sideline every time down the floor. Have you learned what 32 means? I don't, I would assume it's 30, it's a 3-2, three uh, the 3-2 three zone. Uh, but I think that they'll pick up full court pressure the entire ball game, at least to slow them down uh, and then fall back into that zone. They have dropped into a 3-2 zone right now. 14 to 10, Virginia Commonwealth on top, 9.45 to go. Mark Gottfried and Jim Farmer takes the shot, hits it. Boy, he was deadly, Steve, Friday night against Arizona. He's uh, hit one of two now early on. And one of the advantages uh, the Crimson Tide may have in the ball, this ball game is scoring off the bench. Uh, Farmer four for seven from the field the other night. 
9.45 to go first half. 14-12, Virginia Commonwealth with the lead. And now Alabama into a 2-3 zone. That's a little unusual, isn't it? Well, they play predominantly man-to-man -man defense uh, straight up. Skip pass quickly across and back out to Orlando Lamb. Boy, he can he can get that thing all night long. Well, yeah, here's a player that averaged just under six points a game last season. Uh, played a lot over the summer with Gerald Henderson, who's in the NBA, who's a VCU graduate, found a jump shot. And believe me, the game's a lot more fun when you score 17 points a game like he is this year, as opposed to six points a game like last season. Godfrey counters for Alabama. Mark Godfrey, number 23, sophomore from Mobile, Alabama, who spent a year at Oral Roberts University and then set out last season after transfer as a redshirt. 16 to 14. Lamb has eight points, number 20, for uh, VCU, and Connor has eight as a high point man for Alabama. The thing which impressed me so much about VCU the other night was their ability to run their offense from 15 feet in. Every time they pass the ball, they were in shooting position. Now uh, let's see if Alabama can force them out a little bit more. Whip Sanderson talking it over with one of the officials. We've got time out with 8.23 to go in the first half. Is indeed Steve Brody an experienced basketball team. Um, and as you can see from that graph, it's probably the oldest team in the country. Now, I don't know that the age has so much to do with anything, but certainly the experience factor, that elusive ingredient, chemistry. Uh, this team plays so well together. They've got that. They've won, as you know, 73 games over the last three years now. And you know, when you get a team that knows how to win, uh, you can't place a, a value on that. It's just it's, it's something that just happens. Might explain the Neil Wake, a 27-year-old who is not in the lineup right now, spent four years after graduating from high school working in private business in his hometown, and then decided to go to a junior college, which he did for a couple of years before coming to Virginia Commonwealth. Plus, 27 years of age, the Neil Wake. Right now, Orlando Lamb has the ball, just under eight minutes to go in the first half. So he's to the ball. Alabama now into a 3-2 zone. Orlando Lamb tries to solve the puzzle, goes to Schlegel inside, oh. travels. Mike Schlegel. You wouldn't think that the change in defenses would bother a team with experienced guards. Lamb and Duncan have to, to recognize the situation, get their team into the proper offense. I think already, Steve, we've seen Alabama in more zone than we saw in the entirety of their game against Arizona. The only time they zoned the other night was on an out-of-bounds play from underneath the basket. Just match is has uh, begun. 16 to 14, 728 to go. Terry Connor. He has eight points already. Number 30. The big mismatch, of course, in this ballgame is around the basket. The VCU forward twisted at 6'7, 6'5. They're probably more like 6'5 and 6'3. Excuse me, they've done a great job of forcing perimeter shots in this game so far. Rolando Lamb gets the rebound back to Calvin Duncan, number five. Robert Dickinson, number 15. He's a senior as well. And one of the really two men that will come off the bench for VCU. Here's Schlegel. Draws the foul from Buck Johnson, number 32. That is up, number 41, Derek McKee, freshman from Meridian, Mississippi, who was our MVP in the win over Arizona, despite the fact that he didn't score a point in that game. Uh, History-making. Yeah. History-making MVP. He held Eddie Smith of Arizona, who was averaging 16 points a game, to four points in that game while uh, while he was in the ball game. But those of you who have, who have not seen this kid play, believe me, and, and I said last night, if he puts on 30 pounds, the thing you have to worry about is whether he'll stay in school for four years. He's got that type of talent. Willis McJunk and the referee and uh, working with James Howell and Max Chauvin are two umpires. Mike Schlegel at the line. Cat get it to fall. It remains a three-point lead, and here's quickly Mark Guthrie down two on two. Oh, nice, nice move. Godfrey, the six foot two, 180 pound point guard, or off guard rather, averaging 8.5 points this year, and it's 17 16. Now trying to solve the puzzle of the defenses again. Well, and I know that Alabama doesn't really like to run the ball that much, but I just, from what I've seen, it, it seems to me they get better track in the basket when they bring the ball down the floor a little bit quicker than usual. Mike Schlegel will pay the high post most of the day. In the corner, Michael Brown can't get it to fall, and Bobby Lee hurts with a rebound. Well, J.D. Barnett is worried about his club rebounding. He said that's one of their weaknesses, and they're not getting on the offensive board. Certainly, now Alabama will go to the line. 
I think what you have to be impressed about when you look at VCU, though, is that with such a senior-dominated team, it's hard to get a team to improve over the course of the season, particularly when they're the senior-dominated. And this team has, and I think that's what every coach looks for. Gradual improvement when you're playing your best basketball when you get to the NCAA tournament. Calvin Duncan drew the foul, and Jerry Conner is the mark. Connor is ordinarily a 79% free throw shooter. Substitution now. Number 35, Phil Skinny. Freshman from Charlottesville, Virginia, 6'8. Comes into the lineup now for Virginia Commonwealth. And back at the line with the second of two, Terry Connor. Tied up. 17 all. 6'10 to go, first half. Uh, Skinny's a little bit of a surprise. Only got three minutes uh, of action in Friday night's game. Nice pass underneath. Schlegel, some contact. Now they grab off, too, I think. And here's another Arizona-Alabama possession. Mark Godfrey. Oh, uh, whoops. Uh, uh, uh. Can't play. <laughs> you know, he had success the last time in that situation, bringing the ball all the way down the floor for a basket. So you know he wanted to do it again. And changed his mind a couple different times, finally lost the ball. Turnovers have been at a minimum in this game. VCU is averaging only 12.4 turnovers per game. And Alabama not that turnover pro either. 17-17, 5.44 to go. We come to you from Albuquerque, New Mexico, with this West Region second, second round meeting between Alabama and Virginia Commonwealth. The winner of this game goes on to Denver next week. And we'll take on the winner of our second game, North Carolina State, against Texas El Paso. Already in Denver, of course, St. John's and Kentucky. Lamb shot for fall. 5.20 to go, tie game at 17. Now zone defense again. Underneath, Bobby Lee hurt with Schlegel there. Here's almost got the three-pointer. Uh, on that offensive possession, it was the first time they got the ball inside and been able to get a, uh, an offensive uh, attempt. Watch the ball coming inside. One of the things that they did not do well in Friday night's game is get that ball in a scoring position like this from the wing. All of the passes inside have come from that foul line extended area around the key, which is, you know, unusual. Normally you'll get it to the wing, you know, draw defense with your, with your uh, ability to shoot from the wing and then dump it inside. One of Bobby Lee hurts his strength does not come at the free throw line, sitting on the 60% this year. Substitution again. Number 41, Alvin Robertson, back in for Phil Stinney for Virginia Commonwealth. J.D. Barnett is now getting set to send Rolando Lamb back in the lineup. Oh, and yeah, Lamb will uh, replace Robert Dixon. Well, I would think that with, with Lamb right there is probably the one player they need on the floor the most. Those of you back home in Richmond may not recognize Ian Calvin. The two of them standing there side by side had full heads of hair at 9 o'clock last night. They walked into breakfast this morning with caps on their heads, and J.D. Barnett didn't know what they had done. And uh, I'm not sure what J.D. Barnett is uh, arguing about, but things seem to be said right now. gets one of two, and Alabama lead of 18 to 17, their first since they led it 4-2, 5-0-8 to go first half. Once again, 3-2 zone by Alabama, they started in the man, uh, gave up a couple easy baskets, they've gone to a zone, I guess probably from about the 11-12 uh, minute mark. Is that a tactical surprise to you? Um, not really. I, I thought that before the game that they would start man because that's their best defense, but obviously against a smaller lineup, you're going to be out quick, and I think that it's a very good move. Turnover against Virginia Commonwealth. That is their fourth. Timeout has been called with 4.45 remaining. We're back in Albuquerque at the pit on the campus of the University of New Mexico where the Alabama Crimson Tide from the, from the SEC trying to become the third Southeast Conference team in the final 16. They lead it 18 to 17. Field goal percentage, nothing blistering so far, but nothing abysmal either. But I think the difference has been the Alabama zone. Uh, it's forced that VCU offense probably uh, three to four feet uh, beyond what they're normally used to taking their shots at. That percentage achieved by both clubs on 8 of 19 shooting. One more free throw so far for uh, Alabama. Whoops. 
turnover. And Bird, if you're not going to shoot a high percentage, you've got to win the other areas of the game. So coming into the ball game, I felt like DCU has to shoot about 50% to win the game. Alabama, as you see Farmer check into the ball game, uh, has got the advantage in the rebounding and defense, I believe. Jim Farmer is in, and Mark Gottfried on the bench. Derek McKee also went for Alabama, along with Bobby Lee Hurd, Terry Connor, and Buck John. Uh, Wimp Sanderson, the Alabama coach, will use eight players in the course of the game. Not much more than that. And BCU ordinarily doesn't go any deeper than seven off their bench, but we've already seen Phil Finney in the game. Now, Calvin Duncan for BCU, averaging in double figures, but has scored only two so far tonight, or this afternoon. Now, you'll see, you see what they do on offense now. They'll move uh, Lamb and Duncan to different spots on the floor. They'll, they'll pass and cut so the defense doesn't know where they are. Bobby Lee Hurts with yet one more rebound, 18-17. And Alabama with a chance to increase the lead by three. And it is just so difficult to score inside against this defense. Uh, whether you change your shot or not, I think in the back of your mind, you're probably at least shooting it a little quicker than normal because of the possibility of a block. Harry Connor, what a move, and he used the glass nicely. And it's a three-point. Alabama lead with 3.33 to go in the first half. Now that's Connor at his best. It was something that Arizona did very well the other night, letting him some penetrating to the hoop. Connor with 11 points, and Bobby Lee Hurt has five rebounds already. Again, the zone by Alabama. Orlando Lamb started off hot, almost taken away. It is Jim Farmer. Wins the battle, takes it up one on two, gets the rebound, Connor does, and comes out to reload. And he's set it up now. Excellent, excellent decision. Uh-oh. Bobby. Watch the long pass from Connor from underneath. It is a great luxury to have a player like Hurt who can get you this type of an easy basket. If you'll notice, BC, every time BCU comes down the floor, they have to work for their shots. They've got to make a few passes, expend energy. Uh, what a luxury to be able to throw it up in the air and get an easy one for your big man inside. Hurt now with five points. <laughs> Largest lead by either team is now at six with exactly three minutes to go in the first half. 23 17 on the three point play by Bobby Lee Hurt. freshman that came by and swatted the ball back in. Watch it from underneath, Steve. You know, it's very difficult to block out in that zone defense. He didn't walk there. Now watch. Look at that. McKee backhands it. That's the freshman. <laughs> Take that. Nice replay from underneath. And you saw Derek McKee, who Steve Grody admires a, a great degree. Now Mike LeBron at the line. That cuts the lead to five. Substitution down to the 40, Daryl Neal is in for Alabama. He's a junior from Los Angeles, California, who started his collegiate career at Oregon State before drafting a couple of years ago. But uh, I think the important thing I, I want to remember in this ballgame, like I said, is the first key possession for either team. And while they didn't make the basket, they got an offensive rebound for the first time. So, so they got something done in a critical situation. They do get one point, but now Bobby Lee Hurd comes up with it, and Alabama has a chance to go up by seven. 2.29 to go, first half. McKee, Meridian, Mississippi. Back to Jerry Connor from Birmingham. Bobby Lee Hurt. He seems to me to be so much more of a presence in this game than he was against Arizona on Friday night. Only because we're getting him the ball. This guy works as hard as any man in the country from block to block to get open. Sometimes they just don't find him. Uh, tonight they are. 25-18, two minutes to go in the first half. Largest lead of the game. Flagel from the corner. Not there. Offensive rebound by Calvin Duncan, who throws up a prayer, trying to get a three-point uh, or a shooting foul, rather. Now a sub substitution coming in again. This is Neil Wake, W-A-K-E. He started the hairless trend, he and Michael Brown. He's from Wake, Virginia, about an hour south of Richmond. And Neil is a 27-year-old starter who spent four years in private business working before he went on to college. 
Now VCU to inbound, Michael Brown, number 22. Slagle. Going to be the three-two zone. It's really a three-two. But on the one side, they'll sort of match up and it'll look like a one-two-two. Interesting, they've got six foot nine inch Darian McGee out in the post, and that time Darryl O'Neal will be called for the foul. Well, and that has really become something that a lot of teams around the country will do. And obviously, uh, if you take a look at it from this angle, you can see now he snuck the pass inside on that occasion. Boy, that looks like a pretty decent block. But with Makia out there, it makes it difficult to pass over that defense. 41-year-old J.D. Barnett, graduate of Bonoma State, former head coach at uh, Louisiana Tech, giving way to Kenny Russo, and of course, Louisiana Tech lost only twice so far this year, and they're in Dallas next week against Oklahoma. Wake with the first of two, that makes it 25-19. And there's Wimp Sanderson, 20 years an assistant at Alabama before he got his shot at the head coaching position five years ago. Rebound, Alabama. Darrell Neal, 25-19, 92 seconds to go in the half. And I think that you just want to make sure you take nothing but a good shot right here. He's getting close to intermission. Uh, he had a six-point lead. They got a good shot, just didn't fall. VCU with a chance to shape it to four. One ten to go, coming up at halftime. A look at Chicago's other school, Loyola of Chicago. And of course, Brett Musburger will bring us up to date on all of today's NCAA tournament action. Scores and highlights. Loyola easily disposed of SMU by 13. He brought her away to beat Georgetown. Off the glass. Rebound, Alabama. Derek McKee. And Whip Sanderson said, hold it, go for one. With a 25-19 lead. Jim Farmer, number 21. Guarded by Calvin Duncan. Oh, boy. Oh. Go for one. Nice shot. 27-19. <laughs> it's an eight-point lead. Largest of the game. <laughs> Alabama came out of that smell like a rose, didn't they? What's been the key so far? Once again, I, I think it's in the Alabama zone. They forced this offensive perimeter. They had the shot to fall with great regularity. But the last three times now, BCU's gotten the offensive rebound. Come up with a travel ball. Watch Bobby Lee Hurt in isolation at the other end of the court. Well, obviously, this is the, the one big player that they're going to have trouble handling inside uh, in that zone defense. Well, he went up and got the basket, and it has been the change of Alabama from the man-to-man -to, -man to the zone that has been effective for them here in the first half. The score at the end of the first half, Alabama 27, Virginia Commonwealth 19. Just about set for the second half of the second round West Region encounter between Alabama and Virginia Commonwealth. Just about set for the second half of the second round West Region encounter between Alabama and Virginia Commonwealth University. At halftime, Alabama shooting 46%. Virginia Commonwealth in the last 10 minutes of the half has dropped now from 42 to 34. And a rebounding edge of uh, 21 to 14 for Alabama. Steve Grody, I'm, I'm curious by the fact that on Friday night, Alabama in a man-to-man -man held Arizona to less than 30%. Now they've gone to a zone, and, and VCU can't beat that either. Well, I'll tell you what, I, I've seen 60 minutes of defense now that leads me to believe that Alabama can play with anybody in the country. Certainly defense is what uh, allows you to beat any, any of your opponents. Uh, take a look at some of the defense here. And remember, it was man-to-man -man defense Friday night, uh, which forced Arizona to shoot 29% from the field. Uh, I think that's a little bit uh, beyond... Lambs, uh, where Lamb is used to shooting the ball from. You saw the hand in the face and the easy rebound. And at the other end of the court, that height advantage has been exploited by Alabama. They have been able to get the ball to Bobby Lee Hurt. Well, they really have, and they've made a couple of lobs Friday night. You'll see another one here. Uh, additionally, he's gotten the ball inside a couple times on the offensive rebound. Anytime he gets it in here, and in this situation, it ended up a three-point play, but he'll either go to the uh, line or score a basket. Bobby Lee Hurt now has 10 points and eight rebounds, six defensive and two offensive. He and Connor, I think, have been the keys for uh, Alabama so far. Well, let me tell you that in the, in the VCU, VCU locker room, there probably wasn't much of a conversation. It, it was all one way. J.D. Barnett 
convincing his team that they had better get on the boards. Now, right at the close of the first half, they missed three uh, straight times down the floor, got the offensive rebound. Uh, they were only able to convert uh, at the free throw line for one point on those three extra attempts. But uh, I expect them to come out and really uh, send more people to the boards. Really interesting to see now whether VCU tries to exploit that uh, zone defense and if Arizona, or rather Alabama, stays in it. CBS Sports coverage of NCAA. We are at the pit in Albuquerque, New Mexico. Second round West Region game. First time these two teams have ever met. Alabama with an eight-point lead trying to become the third Southeast Conference team to advance into the final 16. Kentucky has made it. They will be in Denver next week. And Auburn has made it. They'll be close to home in Birmingham. Alabama had a 10-2 run the last 6.55 of the first half, which accounts in large measure for their eight-point halftime lead. And surprise, half-court pressure trap right off the bat in the second half. Oh, that's how you answer it. Mark Gottfried heard the call, answered the phone. And Gottfried with six points. Uh, a press like that in the half-court situation is effective against a team that doesn't pass the ball well. And I wouldn't say Alabama has all the passing skills in the world. Now Virginia Commonwealth trails by 10, 1930 to go. They were 24 and 1, Virginia Commonwealth that is, in games in which they led at the half. It tells you they didn't trail by the team too many times, and now they're down by 12. And it also tells you that they don't come back very well either. They're 20, uh, 26 and 5. They're 2 and uh, 4 in games where they trailed in half. Underneath. Calvin Duncan, see if it's a shooting foul. Derek McKee, number 41, freshman who held Eddie Smith of Arizona to only four points the other night on the ground. Well, it's certainly this is where you like to get the ball against the zone defense. For this reason, you can shoot from there. And for, remember, they've only got two people along the baseline in that 3-2. Somebody has to come up and, and guard you. Somebody should be open underneath for a layup if they can get it in there. It is ruled a non-shooting foul, and TCU penetrates. Orlando Lamb gets two. One of the things Alabama did so well the other night was prevent uh, the penetration against that zone. Uh, that time right down the middle, which should never happen, uh, but certainly that's what Lamb does very well. And Virginia Commonwealth has gone back to that man-to-man. -man. And a foul away from the ball on number 43, Mike Schlegel. Now here's the battle of the big guys inside. Schlegel maybe with a little more ball, hurt with a little more quickness. No question about that foul. That's the first personal foul for Mike Schlegel, the senior from Bayshore, New York. 31-21 with 18.43 to go in the half. Set the lineups for you. Here's Gottfried again. Not there. Buck Johnson, number 32, with a rebound. Passes off to Derek McKee. And Connor will reset. Looks over what is now his own defense employed by VCU underneath the Bobby Lee Hurt. That was off the hand of Neil Wake. It'll be Alabama's ball. I knew they had some fans here somewhere. We didn't see them Friday night. Cheerleaders didn't make the trip nor to the pep band, so it, it's a quiet Alabama contingent here. Bobby Lee Hurt. Oh, he has really, really found the answer to that. I'll tell you what, this guy's playing uh, very, very good basketball out here in this, in this sub region. A lot of people have said that he didn't have quite the year that they expected out of him, but when you look at the stats, he shot fewer free throws, had fewer uh, attempts from the field. Defenses have stacked in on him this season. He's got 12 today. Now into the corner it goes for the Rams of Virginia Commonwealth, representing the Sun Belt Conference. Now remember, I think VCU would like to get that ball to the middle of the zone. Fortunate to, to complete that pass. Calvin Duncan able to save it and gets it back to Orlando Lamb, number 20. And I can sense a little frustration now on VCU's part. Uh, a bad shot right here is certainly what they don't need. Nice pass by Schlegel into the corner, quickly back to Orlando Lamb. Has to take the off-balance shot, but it's soft enough to fall through. Maybe when he shoots it, it's never a bad shot. I, I don't know. 12 points for Orlando Lamb. As we said, he had 30 Friday night in the win over Marshall. Buck Johnson. <laughs> Think things are going right right now for Alabama? No. <laughs> Took a little athletic ability to get that through. Of course, a little luck. 17 minutes to go in the ball game. A 12-point lead again. It was eight of the half. Schlegel turn around. Short. Rebound. Neil Waite. Back to Lamb. It's a little too far out of his range. He'll take this one, though. Oh. 1-3-1 zone this time down. Now, if the ball goes in the 
corner on this defense now track. Let's see, Derek McKee is in the corner. Now come across the near side to Mark Godfrey. Uh, I think Sanderson would like them to start attacking the passer here. One three one, get into your offense. Underneath the Buck Johnson, off balance shot, he'll go to the foul line at 2-2. I think they got Schlegel again, the second foul. Anytime, we'll, we'll take a look at this, the U of I have talked about all through the world. Anytime you let a post player put the ball on the floor, he's going to get a shot attempt and either score against you or you're going to foul him. By that time, the defensive help wasn't there but quite soon enough. He put it on the floor and got a good attempt. Johnson hits 72% uh, from the free throw line. Got his first basket on that off balance shot a moment ago, and now has three points. Close with Sanderson. Buck Johnson uh, held scoreless in the first quarter. And he is the leading scorer of the Alabama starting five. Back to a 12 point margin with 16 minutes. We played 25% of the second half. 16 minutes to go. Once again, operating against a 3 2 zone. Duncan's going to go right to the free throw line, hoping to get two, uh, two shots. I don't think he was going up for a shot. Let's see if they give it to him out of bounds or if they let him shoot. Watch it from take ground another, level. Take another look at it. You can see both Duncan and Lamb now are trying to force penetration to make this zone uh, move around a little bit more, hopefully open things up inside or on the way for some easy jumpers. Barnett, J.D. Barnett, the VCU coach, He's not a smiler in ordinary times with the brown is really there, but that might bring a hit of a smile as Calvin Duncan cuts it back to 10. 15, 30 to go in the game. Calvin Duncan has four points in the game. Donner was five for five in the first half. That shot won't fall. And here comes BCU. They need a run of their own to get back in this ball game. From they the corner, that right there. Michael Brown shot is strong. Brown's just been unable to hit one. Johnson with the rebound. A senior dominated Virginia Commonwealth team trailing now by 10 points. They have four players in the starting lineup who have scored a thousand or more career points. There's a steal by one of them, Orlando Lamb. Go! Take it out! Two on two. Duncan with the spin move. Up and in. Now, I think anytime those two guards get the ball in that situation, they've got to force it right to the bench and get a good shot. It's too difficult to come down and work the ball every time against that zone defense, which has such a height advantage. Now down to eight. 37-29, that's where it was at halftime, and we've got 14-34 to go. Derek McKee, that's outside his range. He doesn't want the shot. Back to McKee, which one to be? Traveling. Good call. Bobby Lee Hurts. The last four points have belonged to Virginia Commonwealth. They need a few more. Anything else, the great defense. Now he's he's cut quick with his hands, and now, once again, you see, he gets the ball, and he doesn't take, that, take it down the floor uh, with reckless abandon. Uh, takes a look at the situation, gives it to Duncan. Duncan's got the one-on-one -on -one moves to take it in and score an easy pass. Duncan now has six points, four in this half. It's 37-29, 14-26 remaining in the game. The winner goes on to Denver. The loser goes on. As the NCAA championship on CBS is reduced to 16 teams by the end of the day. Orlando Lamb to an unsuspecting Neil Way quickly to Shagel. Schlegel turn around, it's not there. Rebound, Duncan, one of the few offensive rebounds they've got. And Duncan puts it up and in. Rebounding as much as anything else is strictly desired. You've got to work to get the ball. Virginia Commonwealth now doing an excellent job on the offensive board. Foul by on Orlando Lamb. Watch the offensive rebound here, Steve, and it's been a, uh, one of the rare ones today. Well, and, and Duncan at 6-3 goes in there. You see somebody kept that alive. Uh, is that Michael Brown? Keeps it alive. And that's really what made the play. If you can't grab it, slap at it. Knock it around. Give your guys a chance to come up with it. Uh, that time, Duncan inside at 6-3, scores the basket. 37-31 with 13-54 remaining. Gary Connor, 10 points in the first half, none in the second. Derek McKee, number 21. 1-3-1 zone again. Uh, and 
I think the last three or four possessions, Alabama's been a little unsure of himself offensively. Good play right there. Line pass from Buck Johnson to the freshman, Derek McGee, a touch pass. And it's back to an eight-point Alabama lead as Alvin Robertson gets ready to come in for Virginia Commonwealth. Duncan drives the drive a little pump fake into the corner. Schlegel doesn't want the shot. Orlando Lamb will take it. 16 points for Orlando Lamb, almost equaling his season per game average, 13.05 to go. Once again, it's the team that averaged 5.9 points per game last year. Barry Connor, trapped in the corner. Turn around by Buck Johnson, off-balance shot. Schlegel with a rebound, foul on Hurt. Bobby Lee Hurt draws the foul. That is his first, however, in the game. When, when rebounding isn't desire, it's usually position. A smaller guy, if he can get position, can keep a, a taller man off the board. This time Schlegel with his ball. Then it hurt from getting around him. Bird, I think that's the type of shot that you have to learn to shoot off the board. That little five to six-foot turnaround is too delicate of a shot from that angle to shoot straight in the basket. Oh. Jim Farmer draws the foul that will send Calvin Duncan to the line. The Virginia Commonwealth uh, guards, Duncan and Lamb, look like they've got a little freedom to take a shot and create something whenever they want. Lamb's made most of his. Duncan this time will go to the line. Duncan hitting 80% for the year. That percentage is just dropped. Alabama with the ball of the lead, traveling. You don't like that call. Well, I, you know, I, I'll just say that I wasn't looking at his feet, but I, I can tell from his upper body that I don't think he still got a uh, pivot foot again, but obviously that was the call. Official might have had a better look at it than I did. Virginia Commonwealth favored coming into the ball game. They were seated number two, kicked out. Calvin Duncan drives it, puts it up too much. And Bobby Lee Hurt has the rebound for Alabama backcourt foul. that time on Duncan's part. Got an offensive rebound, which he feels he should have uh, converted into a basket, and I think he probably should have too. He's being cautioned by the referee Willis with Duncan as his third personal foul. Substitution, Neil Wake, number 30, back in the lineup for Virginia Commonwealth. And Alvin Robinson will get uh, to sit down for a while. I, I thought that that was a basket that really could have turned the momentum. BCU now with some full court pressure. But, oh, he walked. Jim Farmer, after the walk. And I think Buck uh, shuffled his feet before he made the pass, but certainly he made the good pass for the back. Well, folks, you might want to remember the time. It was a 12 more mark when DC had a chance to cut the lead to three points. And it's got a strike to seven. Here's Duncan. No, rebound Farmer. And all of a sudden, the rebounding edge back in Alabama's favor. 11.32 to go. 41.34. Man-to-man defense. See if they go inside. Started by Rolando Lamb. McGee. Not there. Farmer with the rebound. And finally, Rolando Lamb comes down for Virginia Commonwealth. One on three. He didn't have a whole lot of rebounding help on the game. I'll put it that way. Should say not. 41 34, 10 48 to go. Vern Lundquist and Steve Grody live on CBS from Albuquerque, New Mexico. And you know, this is a great matchup here at that point guard position. Connor having an outstanding ball game. He makes this team go. He handles the ball, sets up the offense, lambs defensively against him. Back. 
tell you what, the last couple of bounces have certainly gone Alabama's way. Jim Farmer was the starter until about eight games ago. And then they inserted Derek McKee in the lineup for rebounding purposes. Farmer is the sixth man, comes off the bench every game about the 13 minute mark in. And so far today, he's hit on six points. Well, had two real big rebounds, one defense, one offense. And now again, the rebounding edge. Back in the Crimson Tide corner, 43-34, there was a point at the 12-minute mark when VCU had a chance to cut it to three points. But Calvin Duncan's basket wouldn't fall, and it's been Alabama's momentum ever since. <laughs> Offensive foul on Buck Johnson. You know, I think that when, defensively, when Johnson gets that ball in a post-up position, I think I would play off of him and make him face up to try to make a move. Nine minutes, 45 seconds remaining in the ball game. Alabama up by nine. And early in the second half, the rebounds were even in the second half for these teams. But Alabama now has got a 10 rebound edge over VCU. And I think that you can see once again in situations, as you take a look at the field goal percentage, when VCU shoots and the ball comes off the rim clean, Alabama generally gets the rebound. But when that ball hits the rim a couple times or, or, or takes a long bounce, VCU has a little bit better opportunity to get in there with their quick hands and come up with it. Virginia Commonwealth, thrilled by as many as 12 with about 14 minutes to go in the game, made a mini run, cut the lead to five. It's back down to back to nine now. Oh, right, big pass. Mike Slagle will have a chance to shave three off of it as Darrell Neal draws the foul to the 40. Take a look at this one again, Fern. It's one of the few times that they've successfully been able to go inside the Schlegel and get off a good shot. Uh, he hung in the air just long enough to get it off the board. Uh, a big play coming out of the timeout. That's the third foul, as you saw on Darrell Neal and Mike Schlegel at the line. Getting 68% for the season. And a chance to cut one more goes by the board. 43-36, 9.30 to go. Jerry Connor, guarded in man-for-man -man by Rolando Lamb. Nice pass to Jerry McKee. Little reverse pivot off the board for a freshman. I had to talk to Riff Sanderson about Derek McKee yesterday. He said he looks like he could use a few pounds. The minute the season is over, he goes in the weight room. Robert Dickerson counters for Virginia Commonwealth. The first point, Steve, off the bench for Virginia Commonwealth. Well, I think that he has to contribute today. He's one of the few guys that you might lay the instant off bench. Nice drive to the hoop. Battle underneath. Slago almost has the ball. He walked. It looked to me like he might have shuffled that time. Once again, though, Alabama with a quick hand is now coming up with the majority of those loose balls. 47-38, nine-point lead, 8.30 to go in the game. Virginia Commonwealth, 26-5. and five. From way outside, Schlegel jumps, puts it up, got it. Seven points for Mike Schlegel, back to a seven-point deficit, 8.15 to go. Front line scoring, Alabama with that almost two-inch for man edge. As a matter of fact, it may be more than that. J.D. Barnett told us yesterday his two forwards are listed at 6'7 and 6'5. They're really 6'5 and 6'3. And here comes TCU now. Big, big, big offensive series. Oh, the freshman in the follow-up. What a great sequence. And J.D. Barnett is going nuts on the bench. 47, 42, 7, 48. Rip Sanderson says, I've seen enough. Let's go find out and talk it over. Watch the last sequence by Calvin Duncan and the block by Derek McGee. Well, the freshman just ran all the way down the floor, got back on defense. Look at that. Duncan smart enough to follow it up. Excellent timeout by Sanderson. Called it before the, before the uh, momentum completely changed. Seven minutes, 48 seconds remaining. It's a five-point Alabama edge. 47-42 with 7.48 remaining in the game. A sudden run by Virginia Commonwealth as the Rams try and get back into this thing. Their backcourt, he said at the top speed, is one of the best in the country. They were averaging Duncan and Lamb. 32 points a game the line. Duncan wasn't that much of a factor until about the last six minutes. Well, I think that he's gotten things going on that wing now. He's started to penetrate. And using his physical ability, uh, he's able to lean in and get off a good jump shot. He scored the last three or four times with that exact move. Big rebound by Bobby Lee Hurst. The rebounding edge, the height superiority has paid off. 
for Alabama so far. See, anytime that shot hits the rim twice or takes a long bounce, it gives the offensive rebounder a big advantage. That is the tenth rebound of the game for Bobby Lee Hurd. He averages eight and a half. 49-42 with 7.20 remaining. Senior dominated Virginia Commonwealth team. Slagle to Orlando Lamb. Rejected by Derek McKee. Brown has the shot altered by Bobby Hurt. And Slagle finally puts it in. Last two possessions, two block shots. VCU stays with it and they convert. Back to a five-point edge for Alabama. 55 remaining in the game. Gary Connor guarded by Orlando Lamb. Whistle and a foul called away from the ball. Watch that last sequence. Well, Lamb has, has made a couple shots on this very same move in the second half. There you see the, the, the second shot attempt block. Good pump fake inside. Last foul on Orlando Lamb, his second. Alabama to inbound, 652 to go in the game. You know, I think that last sequence sort of epitomizes the BCU team. They, they stick with it, they play hard, they're always in the Falcon. They trail by five right now, trap in the corner, steal by Orlando Lamb, and a chance to get it down to a three-point game. Uh, whistle, offensive foul. Oh, now, the two oh. officials are disagreeing. The two officials have disagreed on the call. Willis McJunk and the referee said offensive charge. Went on top by eight and a half dark. They led by as many as 12 early in the second half. 
It has uh, never been closer than the five it is right now. 51-46, Dre shot arrived, back to Neil Wake, shot altered, and taken down by Bobby Lee Hurt, his 11th rebound of the game. Well, Alabama escaped that time because Farmer took an ill-advised shot too early in the offensive scheme. Now with four minutes and a five-point game and no shot clock. Well, there's the answer. You don't slow it down. Oh. Here's Duncan. Three on three. Duncan. He'll shoot two. Looks like they may be calling charge here. Yep. Offensive foul? Yep. by J.D. Barnett with 3.54 remaining in the game. 51-46, Alabama from the SEC, leading D.C.U. from the Sun Belt, came on score 51-46. Elsewhere, Georgia Tech leading Syracuse in the second, Syracuse in the second half by five. Boston College trailing Duke at the half by five, 37-32, another ACC team tries to make for the final 16. Steve Cody, you have a favorite statistic that is not officially kept called altered shots which indicates the, the predominance of the big men and their talent underneath. So far, we've been keeping that stat, and Virginia Commonwealth has had to change six of their shots because of what Alabama's doing underneath. Uh, but now, the ball is thrown away. And they've also blocked five shots. When you're looking at 11 attempts, uh, just probably aren't going to go in. Altered shot. Virginia Commonwealth six. Alabama one. Five blocks to none for BCU. Now, 51-46, 340 to go. Lamb has 18 already. Oh, foul. He'll shoot two. Earlier today in NCAA championship play, some final scores. Game is already completed. Illinois defeated Georgia 74-58. Led through most of that game. Villanova. Oh. I know it hurts. Oh. I know it hurts. <laughs> Steve was one of the great guards in Michigan history. And Maryland had to come from way back to the beat Navy, 64-59. Lamb at the line. He's an 80% free throw shooter and Memphis State in overtime over another Sun Belt team, UAB, 67-66. I'll tell you, this kid right here has made me a big fan of his with the way he played. This is as close as ECU has gotten since late in the first half. But he almost traveled. Gets it off to Connor. Bounce pass to Bobby Lee Hurt. And now they'll slow it down. Connor did a great job. The big man was in trouble. He went and got the ball. Foul on their knees. They caught Robert Dickerson, number 15. That is his third foul. Anytime oh, that your man picks up the ball and gets double teamed, regardless of who you are, you have to come to him to get yourself open. Preferably, you get it to the point guard, and that's what they did in that situation. Neil Wake replaces Robert Dickerson. That's a senior for a senior. Four seniors and a junior in the starting lineup for Virginia Commonwealth. And a sophomore, Mark Godfrey. He is a very effective free throw shooter with a game on the line, as you see from the graphic. Back to five points. Godfrey's dad, Joe, athletic director of South Alabama, former basketball coach of Southern Illinois. Down the stretch of Friday night, Alabama hit 10 free throws in a row. Two big ones right there. Six-point lead, 320 remaining. Back to Orlando Land. Calvin Duncan, he'll take a long-range shot. Rims out. Alabama ball. There is a small but very noisy contingent from Richmond that has made the trip a long, long way to Albuquerque. It's a little early to put the cork in the bottle on this game, but that might do it. That was certainly a big play because usually in situations like this, three on one, Getting late in the game, when you try to force it into the basket, it ends up in a turnover, and it, be it becomes a play that can really change the momentum. With a three-pointer here, I, I think you're right. It, it at least starts to down the path for an Alabama win. 
Back to a nine-point lead for Alabama on the three-point play by Bobby Lee Hurd just under the three-minute mark. 56-47. There's another block shot from Derek McKee. A three-on-one break. Bobby Lee Hurd will pick it up now and suddenly they're going to have to reset. Godfrey. Boy, hasn't Derek McKee played another fine game defensively? He's made very few mistakes, too. I mean, he's had the ball. I think each of the last four possessions, he's had the ball in a trap situation. The freshman's found the proper man each, each occasion. Slow down game now for Alabama. You wonder if you don't play with the shot clock all year long, how much time do you get to work in a slowdown game? Well, just enough to give us a McKee and then draw a backdoor foul. But is it, is it difficult, Steve, from a coach's perspective to call on that slowdown game in a tense game like this? I would just imagine, certainly in, in practice, you practice what you're going to have to do well in the game to win. They probably haven't worked on it much during the regular season, but certainly I would think over the last couple of weeks they've started to work on it. North Carolina State had trouble with it the, uh, Friday night out here. Um, I think the key is that your team understands what you want to do. Are we going to score a layup? Well, are we just not going to shoot at all? And they didn't, I don't know if, what Alabama's trying to do, at least right now. Not there for deal weight. 56-47, nearing the two-minute mark. We've got 2.15 to play. Derek Connor, Alabama the underdog in this game. And it's knocked out of bounds by Calvin Duncan, number five. Five fouls on the senior. So Calvin Duncan fouls out. Senior from Linden, New Jersey. He leads the game with 11 points. In what might be his last appearance in a Virginia Commonwealth University uniform. Mark Gottfried over to congratulate him. Well, Doug is a three-year captain. He's seen his share of winning ball games. Uh, he'll go down as one of the, the best players in the history of that school. for timeout. I don't know what the, uh, the official says. You've got to get the stuff into the game first. And so finally, Robert Dickinson is up off the bench. And that the group of VCU fans behind their bench is giving Calvin Duncan a standing ovation out to stand. There they are. They made that long trip to Richmond to watch Calvin Duncan play and his teammates. Um, just might be the final game for Duncan with 2.12 to go and a nine-point lead for Alabama. Now timeout has been called as the substitution has been made. Timeout called with 2.12 remaining in the game. Back to play for the final two minutes and 12 seconds from the pit in Albuquerque. Vermont Twist along with Steve Brody. That is Griff Sanderson, fifth year as head coach at Alabama where he has spent the last 25 years of his life. Would like to get his team into the final 16. If they do so, Steve, they become the third Southeast Conference team to advance that far. And for J.D. Barnett, agony right now because his team favored, seated second in the region. And uh, at one point in the first half, about four on a roll, all of a sudden, defense change for Alabama. And they've made a valiant attempt to get back. But they've never been able to get closer than four here in the second half. Buck Johnson on the line. Boy, he's been quiet off that screen, right? He sure has. And during the timeout, I was checking to see exactly how many points he's gotten on the board. That's just his fifth. Uh, but I think it's significant that he hasn't forced his offense. Uh, this appears to me to be a team where everyone knows what their abilities are, and they don't try to do more than they're capable of. Back to a nine-point edge. If Alabama wins, they play in Denver next week, next Friday. Michael Brown short, rebound by Buck Johnson. Gary Connor will slow it down. And I would assume that during that timeout, they probably gave the direction saying, we're going to slow this down and, and run the time. I would think, though, that they might want to get three guards in there if they decide to just run time and not score. I'm a little surprised Jim Palmer is on the bench right now. For that is the fourth foul on Orlando Lamb. Well, they won't send in the third guard now, obviously, because they'll have to go back and play defense. They'll want their bigger, bigger people in there. Oh, the tough one. You saw Jim Farmer, number 21, sixth man off the bench. And here's an outstanding question. Derek McKee. Free throw won't fall. VCU's Rolando Lamb. He's got 19 points in the game, two above his season average. Takes it up. And Buck Johnson is fouled with a little more force than 
might be thought necessary by Robert Dickerson. Well, I, I, I don't think that there was anything wrong with the way Dickerson went into that ball. If you're winning by 11 points in the last two minutes of an NCAA playoff game, you better expect some contact on a missed shot. <laughs> Believe me, the team's coming after you. Galvin Duncan, 6 foot 3, 200 pound senior from Linden, New Jersey. Four year starter. And out the line, Buck Johnson. Bobby Lee Hurts with another rebound. He's in double digits. He's got a double double toy. Travis. 135 remaining, a nine point Alabama lead. They're led by eight at the half. Virginia Commonwealth cut it to as few as four about three minutes ago. 21 points now for Lamb as BCU calls timeout. Well, they just let him step right up and shoot the ball with absolutely no defensive pressure. I would think that you would expect that Lamb is probably the most likely guy to take a shot at this juncture. You might want to extend that defense and, and put a man in his face at all times. I think I said it was a nine-point lead a moment ago. It was 11, as you had said. And uh, Alabama. Sure, it was a cutter over there. They're going to come in with three guards now. Farmer just got off the bench. There's Benny D's the defensive coach. He used to be an assistant coach. He's the gray-haired fellow on the right-hand side. And he was at Virginia Commonwealth, as a matter of fact. And you, you've been impressed with this one from a defensive perspective all season long, haven't you? Well, I just think that of the teams left, this might be the best man-to-man -man defensive team uh, left. Certainly, Georgetown plays an intimidating type of defense, but as straight as straight up man-to-man -man goes, uh, and getting to their uh, ability, the way they defend around the basket, this team with this defense can do anything. Virginia Commonwealth. In contrast, a little sad right now. They're down by nine. It's 90, 89 seconds to go, and it is a senior-dominated team for J.D. Barnett. One of those seniors, Calvin Duncan, already out with four fouls. Another of the senior backcourt men, Orlando Lamb, is playing with four. With uh, Duncan out with five. 58-49. Alabama has lost their concentration at the free throw line. I believe they missed the last two uh, one and one. Connor started by Robert Dickerson. Collected <laughs> that ball out of bounds. Had a good trap going. Inbound by Alabama. Mark Godfrey. They've got the three guards in now. Jim Farmer is in there along with Connor. Uh, I think he drew, just threw that one right off the leg of the VCU defender. Don't keep that ball out of the corner, boy. You don't have many options when you get it down there. Buck Johnson for Jim Farmer. Searching for some help, taken away by the Virginia Commonwealth. 114 remaining. Orlando Lamb, he's got 21 points so far. Here comes the free throw line, off balance shot. Good! He has made that move, I don't know how many times in this ball game, and converted. Seven point deficit. And hope remains, but Virginia Commonwealth is out of timeouts now. There's 64 seconds remaining, and they trail by six. Seven. 58-51 with 1.04 remaining. VCU now out of timeouts, and Alabama has three left, should they decide to use it. But uh, I think at the beginning of the day, you said you thought that Alabama's defense and their superiority inside would be telling factors, and indeed, Steve, they have been. Well, I was a little surprised to find that VCU came into the game a slight favorite. All things being equal, two teams come ready to play, which both of these teams did. You know, that extreme height factor just ends up, I think, getting the best of you. And that's all that's happened to VCU. They've just been uh, out there, out hiding it around the basket. Calvin Duncan has fouled out. He did so with 11 points and 8 rebounds. A four-year starter, one of uh, four seniors in the starting lineup for this Virginia Commonwealth team. The Rams, the champions of Sun Belt Conference. Winners of 10 of their last 11. Their only loss was at Memphis State. Across the timeline to Terry Connell. Oh, boy. There he goes into the corner. And a foul on Dickerson. Well, that was unfortunate for VCU because he was dribbling right towards the corner again. And they just missed trapping him inside there. That's five fouls on another of the seniors, 
Robert Dickerson, number 15, 6'6", senior from Opelika, Alabama. And his collegiate career appears to have come to an end. Well, they'll get 60 seconds to make the substitution now, and I think he'll take the 60 seconds and try to, to ice the shooter. J.D. Barnett walking up and down, finally points to figure number 35, Phil Stinney, who will come into the lineup. He's a freshman at Charlottesville, Virginia. Now a standing ovation for Robert Dickerson as he receives the product to that Virginia Commonwealth crowd behind the VCU bench. Coming up next, here in Albuquerque, we've got North Carolina State against the Texas El Paso Miners. And the winner of that game will meet the winner of this game next Friday in Denver, Colorado. watching the action. I'm not sure what he's what he's looking at. <laughs> Whip, Harry, thinking about skiing next week in Denver, perhaps, huh? Up in the mountains, I don't know. <laughs> he's not going to get an ulcer that way. Mark Godfrey. Massimino's team upset the number one seed 
in the southeast, 59-55. They go to Birmingham. Maryland overcame a Navy lead and won it 64-59. They go to Birmingham. And in overtime, a game many of you saw, Memphis State's Andre Turner with the last shot of the game. They come from behind to defeat Gene Barco's UAB team, 67-66, and they go to Dallas. The winner of this game goes on to Denver to join Kentucky and St. John's. And the winner of our next game, North Carolina State, against the University of Texas El Paso Miners. And there is a huge crowd here from UTEP. We're only about 400 miles up the road from El Paso, maybe not even that far. Games still in progress this afternoon. As Bobby Lee Hurt comes out on the field. 39-34, Duke over Boston College in the second half. That game being played in Houston. Georgia Tech leading Syracuse 58-47 in the second half. That game being played in Atlanta. All right, we're ready to play basketball. Got the scoreboard set. Inbound, Phil Skinny to the Lando Lamb, number 20. Got two more. He's got 25 for the game. It's a four-point, five, three-point game. Orlando Lamb has now fouled out with two seconds to go. That is his fifth foul. And this marvelous shooting guard heads to the bench in his final game as a senior at Virginia Commonwealth. Standing right behind his backcourt, got it part, Dalvin Duncan. Well, unfortunately, that foul has to end for somebody. Nothing to be ashamed of. Celebration from Jim Farmer and Mark Gottfried on the far end of the court. And a little bit of a different story on the VCU bench. Let's see Alabama advances. And uh, it's tough to imagine how they... This has to be the best they've been playing. I can't imagine playing the way they have out here and getting beat. This is really an outstanding ball play. Uh, they've got the point guard that runs the show, even when he's not scoring, and Connor. When they get that perimeter shooting, and Gottfried and, and Farmer have done it uh, just enough, uh, that front line is very, very imposing defensively. as the Alabama Crimson Tide join Kentucky and Auburn in the regional quarterfinals. It was Bobby Lee Hurt with 19 points and double-fixed rebounds. He led the way 